So this is summer 2013 and I'm trying something new. For the first time I'm recording a video, at least we'll try this one anyway, outside. And so I hope if you hear any sort of um, noises or anything kind of buzzing behind me that you'll just kind of take it all in and kind of focus on what I'm trying to say. So chapter five is on the heels of chapter four. In chapter four we talked about how do we get um, how do we get condensation? And remember what a cloud is, is basically water has gone from being a vapor to being a liquid. That's what clouds are. And so one of the things about clouds is one, there's a, actually we're going to say two types of clouds that bring us rain. They have the NIMB or Nimbus or Nimbo associated with the name of the cloud. But some clouds bring us uh, precipitation. In some cases, some clouds actually that liquid water falls from the cloud and it's part of the hydrological cycle and ends up in water. So this is kind of interesting. If you kind of look closely at these guys' feet, to me this almost looks like um, kind of uh, an evaporative fog down there. So kind of a frontal fog and of course they have precipitation from above. You know, fog and precipitation are all water in its liquid state. So. Um, clouds. I think I mentioned this before, but when you look up at the sky, and if you're looking at the, um, the milky white of a cloud, the reason it looks white is because light from the sun is hitting, um, hitting water, liquid water, water in its liquid state, and it's what we call multiply scattering. So it has multiple scattering going on within the, um, the liquid uh, cloud droplets. Um, up at upper elevations. One of the things that you might uh, be interested in is as the sun sets, kind of look at what the clouds look like. Because um, if the sun is low on the horizon, it's interesting to see kind of the whitishness. It's no longer white, because actually you can kind of see the shadowed cloud up here. And I don't know, just recently I've kind of noticed that. So we'll be talking more about the formation of cloud droplets that ultimately lead to rain droplets coming up. But one of the things we learned in chapter four was that if you can get a chunk of air ascending, it will um, expand, and as it expands, it will cool. And as air, a chunk of air, an isolated chunk of air cools down, its percent relative humidity gets higher and higher and higher as that chunk of air cools down without adding any water vapor. At some point, it's going to reach what we call the temperature, the dew point temperature, and you're going to have condensation occur. Now, up in these clouds, um, there's another particle. It's actually, it's, I guess what you'd call an aerosol. It's what we call a cloud condensation nuclei, or a CCN. I kind of smile when I think of cloud condensation nuclei, because if you've ever heard the old adage, don't eat snow because snow is dirty, it's because, well, I don't know, but I think of kind of those aerosols, those dust particles actually are involved in ultimately creating our raindrops or our snowflakes or something like that. So cloud condensation nuclei are important in kind of getting that process started. And we'll talk more about that process that leads to precipitation coming up. But um, so cloud condensation nuclei are the things that kind of get the, um, how do I say, get the condensation process going in the clouds, cloud condensation nuclei. And I believe we talked about this LCL, lifting condensation level. That is the elevation to which that expanding parcel of air that's rising, that's the elevation to which it needs to rise, expand, and cool in order to reach the dew point temperature. Okay. Um, so cloud condensation nuclei. A little bit about those little aerosols that kind of help get the water to go from being a vapor to being a liquid in addition to cooling temperatures. Um, there are more cloud condensation nuclei over land than there are over water, which makes sense. And um, that has its own consequences that I won't necessarily dive into right now. But there are two types of cloud condensation nuclei. There are the cloud condensation nuclei that are the nuclei that are the partiers. And that is an aerosol that actually really, really, really wants to go ahead and get water vapor to go ahead and connect to make water liquid, liquid water, okay, condensation. And so we call those hygroscopic uh, cloud condensation nuclei. And in fact, they're so ready to party, they're so social <laughs> that they can go ahead and get condensation to occur when um, the relative humidity is less than 100%. 
And then there are those reluctant cloud condensation nuclei. Those are hydrophobic cloud condensation nuclei. So there's the ones that like, oh, I don't really want to necessarily, but I'll go ahead and serve as a particle around which we can go ahead and get that condensation process occurring. And like this says, those hydrophobic cloud condensation nuclei, you really need to go ahead and have lots of water vapor in that air in order for them to get going. Um, 